What it do? It's your boy DJ Fly got chicken in, man. Tour DJ for Roscoe Dash. You on the road here, that's my DJ. DJ Fly Guy, based out of an Atlanta international DJ now, touring Japan, Europe, and also works with Roscoe Dash. He's worked with Future and Free Man Gang, all that, so he's doing what to do, man. Okay, so uh, how long have you been DJing? I've been DJing for 10 years. How did, how did you uh, get off into DJing? Uh, I actually started out in Atlanta. It's an uh, old skate ring called Skate Town, Old National. Grew up there because my family owned a skate ring, so it's like I grew up in a skate ring, passing out skates. And once you get tired of smelling feet all day, it's like you switch it up. And I just started playing the turns and taught myself how to DJ. Okay, so uh, are you with any DJ crews right now? Oh, uh, as of now, no. I'm just solo focusing on branding my name as a whole versus a group. I was with a couple groups, but it's like every now and then, you know, you're branding the team, one of you branding yourself, you got to step back and switch. It. Okay. Now you say you uh, DJ for Roscoe Dash. How did that come about? Uh, I actually met Roscoe when I was, what, 16, my uh, junior year of high school. We grew up together, uh, not grew up together, we grew up in the same, like, promotional team. And after that, it was like, we blew up as, he went from ATL to Roscoe Dash. When the next transition happened, we just started kicking it and working a lot. And then it was him and Cutthroat, and then Cutthroat went his own separate way. And then I stepped into the picture, and we just connected. Okay. So, so was you with him through the whole Travis Porter and yeah, was, all that situation? Yeah, I was with all that. <laughs> Okay. We good now. We got, actually got a show coming up together, so everything's all all good now. So we're great. Okay, so you being from Atlanta, I'm quite sure you get a lot of different artists bringing you music. Uh, what what would you say is is the situation with the Atlanta scene as far as the music right now? Uh, the music right now, you can't really say because Atlanta switches up on a monthly basis. To be honest, so it's more like. You know what I mean? We want, like, everybody wants a Cali beat, like from um, DJ Mustard, like the YG Ho, hiking. People be on that movement and they switch it up to a whole nother, like, auto tune. It's like Atlanta's, you never know. A hit is a hit if you hear it. Like, so I, I, like, I like different sounds. I grew up listening to everybody, so it's like, switch it up every now and then. Okay, so being a, being a DJ, um, first, let me ask you this, because you know, a lot of people say, you know, you're not, you're not a real DJ unless you're on turntables. So do you use turntables or? or? Versatile, I use everything. I grew up on actual vinyls, and then switched up CDJs, using CDs, computers, everything. It's, yeah, to me, you gotta be a, to be a DJ. You have to do it all of it. You can't just use one. Because in different scenarios, like I might do a show with Roscoe, you might be using CDJs. Even though I use CDJs, you gotta look and you gotta have a job. So. <laughs> okay, so uh, over the, over the years, music has changed. You know what I mean? So comparing music from the past to music now, what what would you say is, is Best quality of music. Best quality of music to me is lyrics. I grew up listening to Outkast, and you know, that's all they spit was lyrics. The beat was like gonna be some random beat that just spit lyrics. I was, I love lyrics. Per se, just me. Okay. Now, with the music being the game, you know, everybody copycatting them. You know, you can't really tell where people are from. Do you feel music has lost its substance, and 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 the, and the people from the different coasts have lost lost their culture? Yeah, I mean, music is more now. It's like. People just think about the club. There's more to life than the club. That's how I think about it. Everybody want to make club picks or banging for the club. It's more to that. Because them running around listening to the club music all day. I go to the club at night. So they want to hear the same music all day long. That's all we hear now. Okay. So as far as if somebody wanted you to play, play a record, what would they need to do to get you to play a record? To get me to play a record through social networks, it's not going to work. You got to either meet me in person and I have a conversation with you, sit down and talk about it like, the way I work, I'd rather set up a meeting if we're like local or we're in town together. Set up a meeting, we sit down and talk about it, play a couple of tracks that I may like or may not like. I give you my opinion on it and we go from there. I'm not per se money hungry, but it's like sometimes money may help the situation, sometimes it may not. Okay. So for people who don't know you, um, what would you like for them to know about you? Uh, that I'm just a young dude out here trying to get it with ambition. I'm only 20 years old. A lot of people don't know that. So it's like, I mean, for me to do this 10 years, it's crazy I'm starting 10 years old. And I just never gave up. I mean, a lot of trials and tribulations and situations where I should have stopped, but I just never gave up and look where I'm right now. Okay. So uh, can you give everybody your contact information and how they can get in touch with you? Um, Twitter's the easy way to get in contact with me because I'm on Twitter all day, every day. It's DJ underscore fly underscore guy. Just tweet me, send me a tweet anytime. Facebook, just DJ fly guy. Just look, look me up, I'm everywhere.
Okay. I got a couple questions for you, man. Um, describe your DJ and style. Like some people chop, some people screw, and some people are blending. Um, what are you doing? Uh, I actually do all chops, blend, screw, and um, scratch. It's pretty much mixing, blend. I'll do all of it. So it's like, because I grew up on different styles, you know, coming across the world, I everywhere. It's like you learn different styles as you go on. So it's like Japan, they're big on scratching. So over there, I just scratch. I did scratch sessions the whole week. Okay. So how how long have you been um, in Japan, and how long did that last? Japan was like a whole month. The whole month of February this year, I was over there for the whole time. And I go back actually. In July, July 26th to uh, September. Okay. So it's like just a tour of me DJing different clubs every night across Japan. And Japan's big, so it's oh. a lot of places to go. Now, what's the difference between Japan's fans and the fans in the U.S.? Japan fans actually appreciate DJs as an artist because DJing is an art, which people here don't really realize. So it's like DJs are more so overlooked here and we're undercut all the time. But in Japan, it's like we get our worth and we get the, the shine up being the worth of a DJ. Okay, now what about culture? Um, you know, I know it's a lot different over there. It looks completely different than here. Um, what type of feedback do you get just from being there even when you're not DJing? Uh, I mean, I got like a lot, like walking on the street every day. It was more like a, oh, can I take a picture for, for this magazine because you have a different style? I want to say pro say so it was because I was black, but it was more so like we dress different from them. They have like a whole New York slash Japan mixture right now. They have their own like eras of like you know fashion or whatever but they're behind from us so it's completely different do you think that uh like as far as japan itself and going over there and being able to do new things what would you what kind of advice would you give to the artists who are strictly um focused on just being celebs in their town or their city i mean to me you gotta look bigger than what it like was beyond your city like honestly I can walk around Atlanta, nobody knows what I look like because I don't go anywhere out here. And it's like I'm from here. But anywhere else it's like I'm good because simple fact I put myself out there to where it's like you have to make yourself bigger than your city. That way your city will follow, like you have something to follow back on towards your city because they see you doing everything else outside of your city. That's what makes people fall in love with you. Okay. So you've been at it ten years. What's been one of the hardest things that you've had to overcome just going through the business itself? The hardest thing, missing my family. I miss birthdays, holidays. And graduations, all that kind of stuff. At the end of the day, it's like, this is what you want to do. It's just like consequences that come with it. Okay, how did your family feel about that? My family, uh, for me to be my age, they tried to hold back and be strict on it. I used to get whoopings growing up saying I couldn't go DJ after 12 o'clock and stuff like that. At the end of the day, it's like, once you got that ambition in you and it's stuck in you, that's all you can do. Okay, so what's next for you now? What's what next? next? Um... I want to say mixtapes. I do mixtapes here and there. But what's next for me? Personally, I have an uh, EP I'm working on with a couple of big name artists that I can't release yet. But just be looking out for that sometime between the end of this year or early next year. Okay. Any last words? Any last words? Uh, you shout out 24-7 Magazine coming through working with me, man. I appreciate everything and everybody that helps me out through our career and wish the best for everybody else that's up and coming. Now that's exhausting. She get off until it's off, and then she mossing. Now that's motherfucking.